Hi everyone, my name is Nofar from SAP Business One Product Management Team. In this video, we are going to talk about the complex dialog. The complex dialog is a new separate window and includes multiple section, custom grids, and standard UI API control. Complex dialogs are useful when we need to build a rich and flexible user interface that goes beyond what simple dialogs can offer. So first, let's see the result. So here, inside the web client, under the delivery view, you can find a new button named My Complex Dialog. Let's click it. So this is the complex dialog, including the header with some UI API control like object status, static text, and then others including two tabs, section one and section two. Inside section one, you can find a custom grid within some data inside. And when clicking the section two, you can find an, another UI API controls. For example, text area, checkbox, object status, and etc. Now let's go back to the code. So this is our Visual Studio code including our project. To create a complex dialog, we will need to work with multiple files. Those files are crucial for setting up the dialog's layout and behavior. The first file is the dialog layout, a JSON file that defines the structure and UI component of the dialog window. The second is the dialog logic, the JavaScript file that contain the functionality and event handling for this dialog. The third is the manifest file, where we declare the dialog so it can be recognized and loaded by the framework. And finally, we have the main view, the delivery view, which includes the button click event that triggers the opening of the dialog. Let's move on to the dialog layout. This file can be divided into three main parts. The first part contains some general parameters that define the dialog's basic properties, like GUID, like type of the control, the controller link, title, and another properties. The second part contains the header and the tabs. Inside our header, we have two groups. Group number one, including some controls like object status and static text. And group number two, including object number. Let's see it in the web client. So this is our complex dialog. Inside you can see in the header that we have two groups, group number one and group number two. Let's go back and let's move to the tabs. So this is section number one, including the grid control. The rows are binded to the data model name demo. And you can find all the columns that we will have. Let's see it in the web client. So this is section number one, my grid in dialog, including all the data that is binding to the data model. Let's go back and see our second section, section two, including text area, input, checkbox, other control like date picker, time picker. Let's see it. Section number two. And here you can find some other controls. The last part is the footer bar, which typically contain the OK and cancel button. We also support other button types. You can check in the online help the full list. Each button 
has his own proc name. In our case, for the OK button, we have this proc. We will check it in the JavaScript. Now let's move on to the dialog JavaScript file, which contains all the logic for this dialog. Here you will find several functions, for example, the onDataLoad function. It retrieves the main view and creates a new data model, which is used to handle all the data inside the dialog. You can see that this is our new data model named demo. Other key function is the one linked to the OK button, this one. This function is triggered when the user clicks OK, and it typically handles the data validation, processing, or passing data back to the main view before closing the dialog. In our case, we just close the dialog window and we print to the screen a message. Let's go to the manifest JSON. As I mentioned before, here you will declare the complex dialog view. And the last one is the JavaScript of the main view. In our case, the delivery detail view. Let's go to the web client. We are talking about this button. When clicking this button, a new function named on open dialog will be triggered. This function will create a dialog with a unique ID and will open the dialog with some initial parameters. If you follow the steps we have shown, you will be able to successfully create a complex dialog, including tabs, grid, and all other supported controls. Thanks for watching the video and feel free to check the documentation for more details and samples.